Hi there, I'm Nikki, and I'm thrilled to invite you on a journey through my game development experience. For those who've been following me for a while, you know I have a lot of game dev experience, and I have even released my own Steam games. But believe me, it wasn't always this way. I started like most of us start, with nothing, like no knowledge, no skill, but full of passion and motivation. Let's rewind to the beginning. My journey started when COVID-19 hit. Everyone was under the lockdown, and it was impossible to do anything than playing Among Us with friends. And then, AJ showed me that there is a game jump, starting in two hours. And just like that, we decided to take part in it. The game jump even had some great awards. For the best game, a team could get four Nintendo Switches consoles. So we gathered some friends and started working. Our ideas? You are the one my HR department on a mission. Picture this. You are the guy responsible for identifying slacking of employees and giving them the boot. At the same time, you are the hero who ensures the hardworking ones stay filled with coffee. Now, let's talk about the cool physics system that always make me go, ah. You can block the doors with objects smashing through glass walls and, my personal favorite, uncovering killing employees by lifting the trash bin cover. I'm particularly proud of this game as it marked a significant learning experience for me. Working in a team of four during a game jam not only created a fun little game, but also achieved a pretty high ranking. While we didn't win anything, it was still a proud moment for us, as we were all basically beginners. Back in the day, there was this trend of joining Facebook groups to connect with people, especially when the real-life hangouts were forbidden. After having so much fun creating my first game, I decided to make a game inspired by one of these groups. Surprisingly, everyone loved the idea. Some pitched it with dialogues, others helped create a website with take reviews to make it look gen like a genuine AAA game. It was the blast, seriously. It felt like a mini army of about 50 people jumped into the game's development. We aimed for a short action platformer with a boss fight final. It took us around a month and we learned tons, considering it was our first playable game from start to finish. This one holds a special spot in my heart, where it finally dropped the creator of the Facebook group livestream playing it, and almost the whole gang tuned it. And that's when it all started to go wrong. Riding the high of success, I felt like a genius, thinking I could create anything and it would work. That's how I started to work on Horsepower Apocalypse. AJ even crafted some devlogs for it, so we can witness what we had in mind. Reality hit hard. We had zero experience in multiplayer, zero in mobile, and our 3D expertise, well, it came from a 4 day game jam. The game turned out way too ambitious. We tried, but as time went on, more things were broken than working. We had to face the harsh truth. Making a multiplayer mobile game was way beyond our current capabilities. We needed a pivot, a way to learn about game development. Back then, we were both college students, and it dawned on us that traditional education wasn't cutting it for game dev. So we dove into YouTube tutorials and hustled to find a job in the industry. It was a challenging time. We juggled full-time jobs in game dev, which we were totally unqualified for, but hey, we learned a ton. We pursued our studies and even gave private lessons to kids in subjects like math to get some money, as our entry-level jobs were better at teaching us game dev than paying a rent. During that period, we couldn't make much progress on our own game ideas, but it wasn't time wasted. We got a lot of attention from senior artists and programmers, and we learned a ton. To be honest, I think that's the best way to start with game dev. Just find a company that will accept you and it will kickstart you your game dev related skills. I can imagine learning all of this on my own. And after all that heavy lifting, you might wonder what's next? Well, we decided to save our life a bit. We jetted off to Greece for some much needed holidays, snacked an electronic scooter and had a blast. Ah, those were the good old times. But let's get back to the game development scene. Now we are back on track. We've mastered 3D art, cracked the cold old multiplayer, and doubled in a bit of everything, if I'm honest. Well, almost everything. UI? No, that's still a mystery to us. 
while well, they I stumbled upon a fan-made music track for Level Run and immediately fell in love with it. The very next day we had a small prototype of a game where we ran through a prosthetically generated corridor, facing off against different entities. We loved it so much that we created a Steam page for it. Filled with high hopes, we reached out to the music creator and asked him for permission to use the music and shared our game with him. Luckily, he turned out to be a really nice guy, allowed us to use the music and even gave posi positive feedback. He loved the game. However, things took a turn when some of the Backrooms fans weren't thrilled with our interpretation. We received a lot of hate for allegedly not understanding what Backrooms is about and for deviating from the traditional concept with entities and weapons. While getting the wishes on Reddit, by the way, we weren't the only ones, apparently Kanye Pixels got too much more. I got a stroke, but hey, I'm alive and my life is no longer at risk as, as I was diagnosed with a small hole in my heart and underwent a surgery. Right now, I'm in the clear and my life is no longer at risk. Yay. But, but let's circle back to the game dev. Despite the challenges, this journey led us to meet incredible individuals who joined our Discord and offered to help make the game. Shout out to Buried, Streamer, Donut, Dread, Women and Crook. You guys are amazing and we want to express our gratitude. Thank you for being a crucial part of the backroom cycle. I need to give you one more important piece of information so that you understand the context of the, what happens next. I had to go through surgery, not just in my hometown, but a whole 500 kilometers away. The diagnosis took its time, and through the surgery was quick, I ended up stuck in a hospital far from my PC. This all went down right when the backroom cycle was in full development, and the release date was breathing down my neck. At release, we had this game. It was awesome, but it was super bugged and missing a ton of content. Result? Over 30% return rate. Mixed reviews, and even though some big shot YouTubers covered it, sales barely bashed. But hold on, we're not diving into that chaos just yet. We want to give Backroom Cycle the video it deserves in its own video. Even though we made a bunch of mistakes, we're pretty confident that Backroom Cycle would sell like hotcakes, given our market analysis of similar games. But with trend-based games, timing is everything. Coincidentally, we noticed a ton of people searching for Skibidi Toilet in our analytics, especially on our promo materials like YouTube Shorts. We researched this subject a bit, and within 24 hours, we set up a Steam page for a Skibidi game to test if our feeling about arriving late to the trend was the real culprit. To our surprise, the results were even better than imagined. 400 wishlist one day. One, without any external promotion. Talk about an indie developer's dream, right? Well, not exactly. Reality hit and we had to change where we live. And get married. No, seriously, we had to because of the taxes. That's how it works in our country. Super not efficient to be unmarried. Plus, there were personal reasons, like being able to visit each other in the hospital during COVID, which became crucial after my stroke. Now, why did we need to move? Here's the deal. Regular checkups post-surgery. We just couldn't swing the 500 kilometers travel frequently. So we uprooted our lives and moved to the city where the hospital is. But let me tell you, it wasn't a walk in the park. Moving took forever. We borrowed a bigger car from AJ's father, made three or four trips, cleaned up the whole place, painted walls, fixed things. AJ's father pitched in, but it still ate up a good two months. Long story short, we couldn't work much because our PCs were on hiatus. The struggle was real. Unfortunately, due to the time-consuming nature of the move, we couldn't release Skibidi fast enough, and interest started to wane. Meanwhile, we kept working on Backrooms, because it's in the early access and we aim to bring it to the state we'd be proud of, ready for the full release. Skibidi is a pretty cool game. It runs smoothly, has few bugs, and it's crazy fun. But wait until you hear about our latest project. Ever played Mac? Yeah, the one Danny made. Our third game is called Survival Luck. It's like Mac, but instead of M, it's Survival. Survival Luck is genuinely inspired by Mac. We are aiming for epic battles, super boss fights, a visually stunning game, 
and meaningful base building. In Mac, building a base was practically pointless. Not only did it not serve much purpose, but it was obliterated by enemies in mere seconds. Like literally seconds. In survival lag, the base will matter, making our character progressively stronger. We also plan on incorporating various cool dungeons. Overall, we want survival lag to be what Ma could have been if Danny decided to develop and work on it several years. Honestly, it's a game of our dreams and we can't wait to play it ourselves.